you're shopping for an Argo in central Alberta, head over to Argyle Motorsports in Edmonton. They have specialist sales and service professionals for all types of Argo XTVs, as well as many other exciting motorsports vendors. You can also check them out on their Facebook page where they post special deals and interesting content. And don't forget to tell them Esme and I sent you. Hi YouTube, welcome to the Emporium Outdoors. My name is Michael and behind me somewhere is my dog Esme. Esme. Very obedient dog. So today's adventure, we're doing an overnight winter camp in Alberta, Canada. We have the Argo with us, but we don't have the hot tent this time. We're going to do just a tarp tent type of camp. So Nature Hike kindly sent me one of their tents to take a look at and see whether it was suitable for my environment. I actually picked the one man pyramid tent and I brought that with me. It's not a four season tent, it's only a three season and it is quite small, but we're gonna spend the night in that and see how we get on. The temperature currently is about minus five Celsius, but when I got in my truck this morning, it was minus 15. So overnight, I think the temperature is probably gonna be between minus 10 and minus 15. So it's gonna be a relatively cold one, especially without a hot tent. So uh, we're gonna to have to be prepared. I'm very much looking forward to it. The weather's forecast not to snow, but you never can tell. It's actually very sunny and bright at the moment and the forecast overnight is again just dry so we're gonna have some amazing stars i can feel it already it's gonna be uh, a wonderful time thank you everyone that left comments in the 10,000 subscriber uh it took me a while to read through them all uh, but great i think the what i took away from most of that stuff was cook better things that was if i could sum the whole thing up and maybe the longer format is something people are liking I used to try and keep my videos for around kind of 10 to 15 minutes because I thought that's what people wanted, easy to digest. But I'm thinking more towards the 30 to 45 minute mark. Um, I don't want to go to the lengths of some of the other uh, YouTubers that it's like two hours plus. For me, that's way too long. I, I normally skip through most of it. I'd rather have the condensed down version. But anyway, I digress. So we have the 12 gauge shotgun with us. It's still legal currently to uh, shoot grouse. So I'm hoping for some grouse and that will fulfill the cooking part. Otherwise uh, we might be a bit light on the cooking aspect. But I did bring a, a special ingredient with me, which I'm hoping that we can uh, use in the cooking somewhere. So we're gonna head out in a second and head down the trail. The snow is not deep. I actually expected it to be much deeper. It's still pretty, pretty light and fluffy uh, so which is good but I was hoping to really give the Algo a test in some deeper snow uh, but this is maybe six to eight inches of snow and the Argo just doesn't even know it's here it just kind of drifts through it no problems whatsoever uh, it's the machine is completely different in the snow I'll tell you that much um, in on the dry trails you know it's it's good don't get me wrong um, but it, it's a different machine once you get, even this small amount of snow on the ground. The machine just glides along, it's a lot more comfortable, steers beautifully. Um, yeah, it's really built for this environment. I'm very, very pleased. This is one of the main reasons I bought it. Uh, so I'm, I'm very excited to take it out in the snow. And yes, I will be getting tracks. I'm just kind of waiting until the snow comes. It takes about two weeks for the tracks to, to order to arriving. And the give or take between uh, about eighteen to two thousand uh, dollars so it's quite an expense but they should last for several years that's my thoughts anyway especially if I only use them in the snow that's what I'm thinking uh, I don't plan to use them in mud or anything like that so they'll be only used in snow so it should be pretty light on the uh, on the equipment anyway I've talked for way too long we're gonna head down the trail hopefully we'll come across a grouse and we'll have something for dinner tonight if not, then we're down to probably potatoes again. So anyway, let's get moving.
So I finally got to the campground. I met some snowmobile guys on the way through here and uh, I discovered the guy that actually built these uh, logs here. So that was really interesting. So the time now is just, let's see, 10 past three with my lovely smoke jumper watch. If you'd like to see uh, my thoughts on this watch, then I'll put a link up there so you can take a look. Fantastic watch. Um, going to camp here tonight. Uh, the sun has just gone behind those trees so it's going to start to get a little bit darker pretty soon and obviously with the sun disappearing the temperature is going to drop. Our temperature now is probably around minus five somewhere around there. So we're going to get the, uh, the stuff set up behind me and we'll see how that works out. So this is the new Nature Hike Pyramid single man three season tent and it's damned orange. Why? Why did they do this? Uh, anyway, that's what we have. That should fit pretty good there. I can have the fire right here and uh, I think we shoot pretty, pretty good. This is the footprint that comes with it. It does come with a bug inner as well. But said that. Really is me. So because I don't have a walking pole with me, I'm gonna have to grab something to make a pole. Okay, so I have my stick. I'm not sure how big to make it yet, but I know one end has to be smoothed over. So I'm just gonna make this Rough end a bit smoother. So I've just got this pole here. So I'm just going to smooth the edges over. So I'm not going to dig into the tent. That should do. Okay, 
okay. So we'll get the fly up, measure the height, and then we'll cut this pole to size. Roughly the right height, so it's gonna kind of armpit level. Let's see if that works. Come on, this. Tent's more or less up. I'm gonna to have to peg down some of these sides because this isn't a four season tent. They're normally built so that the sides allow ventilation, and that's the kind of the last thing I want. So I may end up going around and putting some snow on the edges. Uh, if it had a snow skirt, then this would be actually much better. But it's a three season, not a four season, so. I could always add that, that might be a project. So I'm gonna go around and uh, pick out the rest. I actually give you a bundle of this stuff. I think that's more than I've ever seen for a small tent. And Nature Hike, if you're listening, don't make orange tents, or at least make like a nice brown or green one as well as an orange one. Give people a choice. I really don't want to be in an orange tent. So there we are, all pegged out. It's uh, pretty taut, which is good. There is this gap underneath, but I don't think that's gonna to be too much of an issue. I'll see how we go on, but I may add snow, I may not. It's not too bad. Let's take a look around and then we'll start moving the equipment inside. So we're all set. I'm going to climb in the tent and see how much room this thing's got. It's 
so this tent is pretty small for a human. I think I may be sleeping diagonally. That's good. So that's all ready for Esme. We'll put the other one on as well. So she have the mat as well as the sleeping bag and we'll put her inside the other one as well. That should keep her nice and warm. I'll let this one loft up for a while. And I have this bivy bag as well if I find I'm really cold. Might just uh, toss that down the side. So there we are, that's our sleeping arrangements. Maybe even just sleep with the door open. I don't think it's gonna snow. I'm gonna put the fire just where the camera is and uh, we should be nice and warm, I think. It's a little bit different from hot tenting, that's for sure. So the three main types of tenting that I do, or camping, is I have ground tents, obviously. Actually, four types. Ground tents, hammocks, um, the cot tents, and the hot tents. They're my main four types of camping. I do some tarp camping occasionally as well. And this is almost the same as tarp camping, I guess. It's a preformed tarp. I don't have to mess around with it very quick and easy. But uh, I think that the most convenient, what I could have taken today, which would have made more sense, but I just, you know, I've done quite a few videos on the cot tent, is to have the cot tent. I would have been up and done and all fixed up by now. Literally just takes a few minutes to put up, especially with the cold ground to elevate off that makes a huge difference. Uh, but this is different. I want to try this out. Um, I'm actually quite impressed with the quality of the tent. Uh, it's very light, it's well made, I can tell that much. It is a little small, um, and I'm not a big person, I'm only 5'9". So, um, yeah, I think the, the inner actually, you ha have to lie diagonally across it. So, I'll try that out in a little while, but I think for now, uh, this is pretty good. This mat is excellent, I can feel already, I'm just sat on it, it's, it's, my butt's getting warm, so. That's pretty good. Uh, oh, that's my not things. Make it useful. So anyway, I'm good to uh, set up a few more things and make sure Esme's comfortable. I think it's time for her supper. So we'll feed Esme and we'll get to doing the camp chores. So I've got something new to show you on this trip, and uh, it's uh, an axe. This is my old axe. This is the uh, Bushman's axe. It's a Les Stroud by uh, Wetterlings. Fortunately, they've gone out of business now, which is a great shame. Um, I really do like this axe as a overall all-round axe. Uh, I think this is hard to beat. Um, it's a lighter head. Uh, it does have this weird kind of beard shape on there. And, uh, but it does allow you to choke up very tight to the uh, to the head, so you can actually do some fine work with it. Uh, has a hammer head, which I think every axe should have. Uh, the pole, uh, I really like this, and it's well made. It's I can tell the grind is excellent. Overall, the the axes couldn't be happier. This is one of my favourite all time axes. Um, anyway, that's one axe. This axe, uh, it doesn't have a, ooh, let's get this off, this is just temporary, uh, doesn't come with a mask, so it's on my list of things to make. So this is the uh, Holterford's uh, three quarter splitting axe, so you can see it's kind of the same length, probably a little bit shorter by what, about an inch, inch and a half. Obviously the, the head is completely different. 
Uh, this is for splitting. I want to see whether I could carry a small splitting axe. Uh, I do have a splitting maul, uh, but it's a full size one. And because I'm dealing with like smaller logs to go into my uh, stove, for instance, for my hot tent, I'm not splitting huge logs. So I don't need that huge amount of power. The, the weight in the head is significantly different. Obviously the shape of the head is different. Uh, this one is odd, uh, and I'll show you that. Um, the way that the head was forged is kind of very odd. And uh, I'm not sure I'll pick it up on the camera. I'll try and show you if I can. So if you kind of look at it, straight on that, you see the little tip? See how it kind of bends at the end? Yeah, it's hard to see. Like when you look at the whole thing overall, kind of looks about right. But then when you look at it properly, like this is massive, like it's lent over here. But in profile, when you look at it, Let's see if I can get this right. Profile. Kind of looks right. It's just kind of funky. Um, if this was not a split axe, I think I'd be a little bit kind of upset about that shape. So this is something to bear in mind. With a hand forged head, they're not all going to be exactly the same. And that's kind of what you pay for. Uh, this is kind of odd, like I say. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I could probably fix it. I, I think it's more unique. Um, I haven't used it yet, so maybe I'm premature. I'm not sure. So I'm going to do some splitting with both axes and just see if there's a significant difference. Uh, one thing you can obviously see is a cutting edge is different. One's straight, one's curved, one's larger, one's more narrow. So with the heavier head and the narrower uh, cutting edge of the axe, this should split much easier. That's what I would think, that's just general physics. Let's give it a go. Not sure how you compare them, because every piece of wood's gonna be different. So you know what, I'm gonna take... This one. This is the Les Stroud. That's a pretty good job. Okay, that kind of cleaved that in half easily. I don't know. Don't know. I actually struck the ground there, which is not a good thing. This is definitely a better splitter, but I'm not sure. Um, it's the weight of the head. The head is too heavy for this length of shaft. I can tell right away. I 
what I mean by that is when I swing this, I'm going for high velocity and then I'm trying to stop before I hit the ground. I know I could put something underneath, but I tend to just, because they're small pieces, I can just stop and kind of twist and it will stop hitting the ground. With this one, because it's much heavier and the shaft is quite short, it's, it's a lot of effort to stop the whole thing from going through. So maybe I need to just chop with a, uh, a block underneath or on a stump. This would be fine, but it's not as comfortable. It's not as controllable. Yeah, even though it didn't go through, that actually split the whole log. Like that is literally all the way through. Let's turn it. Yeah, that's, that's doing a much better job. Yeah, I, I would definitely say this is, this obviously is a better splitting axe, obviously. It's already split. You know what, let's try and split a smaller piece. Another one. This wood smells amazing. It's pine. That is beautiful smell. Yeah. So that's the Holterfords three quarter or medium size splitting axe. I think I need to do more tests, but my initial thoughts are uh, inconclusive. I think it's a much better splitting axe than the Les Stroud. That's for sure. But it's designed to split, where well, this is more kind of an all-rounder. Uh, if you want to do many things, this is probably the axe to take with you. If you just want to do splitting, which typically I do, uh, this would be the axe to take with you. So I think in summary, this is a better all round ax. This will do everything that you need, but still be packable, I would say, because of the shorter length of the handle, as well as the lighter head. Uh, this is still packable, but you're not gonna be doing specific like carving work or uh, anything fancy with this. This is gonna be just to uh, you know, beat pegs into the ground. Still has this nice flat pole and to do splitting, which is typically what I do. So I'm not sure, I'm kind of, I don't like change <laughs> too much. Uh, so I'm not gonna pass judgment just yet. So I'm gonna play with this a little bit more and decide whether this is gonna come with me again or it's gonna go into the gear vault where all my gear goes to uh, store and never see the light of day again. Not sure, the, the jury is out. Okay, so we're losing the light pretty quick now, so it probably isn't showing camera very well. Time to build the fire. So let's get started.
I can smell from this wood. It's very resiny. So I don't think we'll have any problems starting it. So I'm just going to grab some tinder from behind me. So I'm going to use a piece of birch bark today. Nope. I nudged the uh, I nudged it before it took. So what I'm doing here is just putting thin sticks across and I'm going to put slightly thicker ones across the top. What that does is create what's called a pyre effect. Maximizes the amount of airflow through the wood and concentrates the heat. So most of the original tinder now is burnt down and now I'm hoping the rest of the heat has actually dried out the rest of the wood 
and it's going to start to uh, burn quite well. And with these outer log supports, the whole thing will collapse in and it will generate a lot of heat from the bottom up. There we go, it's starting to go now. So everyone makes their fires differently. Uh, this is the way I find works uh, really well, uh, especially in winter. Yeah, so it's getting pretty hot now, so everything's good. This will be roaring before long, and we'll be able to get some uh, some nice hot water on. Have a nice cup of tea, perhaps. So we just sat by the fire and uh, listened to some podcasts, which is really relaxing. Love that. And I just saw a little dot just pass across the sky, very bright dot, probably a satellite or something else, and it was super bright. So I have high expectations for the stars tonight. I think it's gonna be probably one of the best nights that I've seen for a long time. It's gonna be quite amazing, I think. Very excited for that. So the temperature's down to about minus eight. Um, it's gonna to continue to drop, obviously, over the night time. But we're both pretty comfortable. I'm sat in this kind of rubberized mat thing that I normally bring with me and half the sleep bag. So Esme is sat over in the tent and she's on her half the sleep bag and she's on a mat as well. And uh, she's pretty warm, but she's crashed out. She did quite a bit of run today and uh, I think she's uh, looking forward to relaxing. Yeah, she's pretty much out of it right now. But I'll make sure she's tucked up inside a sleeping bag, both of them and kept nice and warm. But with her big fur, um, she doesn't feel the cold the same way as we do. So I'm gonna continue to relax by the fire. Uh, this is such a great experience. I wish um, I could kind of transport all my viewers to where I am right now and just experience this. It's just something special. So one other thing, we're gonna be heading down to the Frostbite Symposium, which is an outdoor winter camping event in Red Deer, Alberta on the 4th and 6th of January. So Esme and I will be there in the Snow Trekker tent and we're going to have a great time. There's lots of things to learn. I've signed up for a few courses and I'm very excited about going there. So let me know if you're going along to the event because I'd love to say hi and obviously you can meet Esme. Anyway, I'm going to keep the fire going for a little while but I'm going to start winding down and we're going to head into the sleep bags pretty soon. Well, good morning. That was a rough night. I gotta admit, even by my standards, that was a rough night. I feel like I've aged about two years just for that one occasion. Oh, that was cold. That was cold, uncomfortable. I hate that sleeping bag. I'm used to my big square sleeping bag where I've got lots of room to move around. And uh, I just can't sleep in a mummy sleeping bag anymore. I don't know what it is. I just fought the whole thing all night. And uh, Esme, I think, was very warm. I kept waking up and uh, checking, put my hand inside, make sure her tummy was warm. And she was, so she was fine. I think I got the, uh, the wrong end of the stick with that deal, that's for sure. Should've took the uh, Canadian one, give her the nice plush mech one. But we are where we are. Uh, just got the fire going, got some water boiling, and I uh, need a nice cup of coffee. Uh, let's see where we are with the temperatures. Uh, oh, so the current temperature is uh, minus 16, right there. And the, 
the minimum was uh, minus 16.1 so we're about the coldest part of the day which is typical whenever you get the uh, the sun that comes up and it starts to first kind of heat up the land that's the uh, the coldest point in the morning that's uh, to do with latent heat it's um, principle if you go back to your uh, school science so you always get the coldest part of the morning when uh, the sun comes out so let's talk about the tent the quality is excellent the stuff you get with it is excellent everything's great about the tent but it's too small for people um, unless you're kind of under five feet I think you're gonna struggle with this tent even a standard size steep mat won't fit inside um, mine kind of sticks out the end kind of so even if you slept diagonally across the, uh, the kind of square shape I guess pyramid I think you'd struggle unless you're a really short person or maybe you want to buy it for your children uh, this would be a great tent to camp out in uh, but if you're a normal sized person then you're gonna really struggle with this tent so that's kind of my summary on the whole thing sorry about that but I love nature hike stuff but this is probably not something I would buy gotta be honest So I did change up my cooking kit and uh, I brought along the Swedish cook set which is actually fantastic. I love this set. I'm not sure why I don't use it more often. I think I'm used to backpacking so much I tend to pack really small stuff uh, but this one I've removed everything and just filled it full of um, food and useful stuff. I'm actually going to transfer the water across to this one. One thing you got to be careful with, if your hands are cold, you can't feel heat. So I just want to make sure I burn myself. And the top is really good because it actually acts as a, a lid too. And you can cook two things on it. So just a quick tip, if you do have frozen tent pegs, best way to get them out rather than trying to pull them out is to actually just give them a tap. So it actually frees them up from, the, uh, from being stuck and they will easily pull out. One of the tips I've learned over the years as well is not to bother packing your stuff again after you've used it. Unless you're going on to a multi-day backpacking trip, it's just not worth the effort. You're going to have to unroll things like your tent and your sleeping mats anyway when you get home. So I just tend to roll them up. I always leave enough space in my, my bag so I can actually pack them without them being fully wrapped up. Uh, it just saves a lot of time, a lot of hassle. Last thing you want to do first thing in the morning is um, start trying to cram that stuff back into uh, its, its container that it came in because it's almost impossible. It's better to take them home, dry them out, and then repack them. Uh, the exception is obviously sleeping bags because they're pretty big, uh, but they're not too bad to actually put away. Uh, but the rest of the stuff, I just jam into my bags. And like I say, I always leave enough room uh, to store that stuff in its uncompressed form. 
and uh, just saves a lot of hassle. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It's time for Esme and I to head on down the road. Uh, we had a really good time even though it was pretty cold and it's probably the last cold tent video I'm going to make this year. Uh, if I do any cold tenting again it's going to be in the cot tent. Uh, it makes a lot more sense uh, to me anyway. So until next time, take care. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, leave me a comment, maybe a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.